Art, we love art. Are you an artist? I guess YouTube's a form of art. Saying a YouTuber is an artist is kind of funny to me compared to this list, you know what I mean? I'm Taylor McWaters, YouTuber, and here are the top 10 famous works of art that were publicly vandalized. Yeah, every time you leave a mean comment, that's a vandalism. Get those out of here. Number 10, the attack on the Little Mermaid statue. Grown adults getting upset about the Little Mermaid. Can't imagine that would ever happen again, right? It seems we're still facing the same problem today. S somehow, everyone's getting pissed about the Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid statue in Copenhagen, Denmark, based on Han Christian Andersen's fairy tale, of course, had faced repeated vandalism since its installation in 1913. Somebody kept going back and messing with the statue. For some reason, they were just like, F mermaids. In 1964, however, the statue's head was completely removed by an unknown individual or individuals. I would imagine it would take a few people to remove a statue's head, but who am I? I'm no vandal. Yeah, they just did that somehow unnoticed and they got away with it. Now, despite restoration efforts and additional security measures, the statue continues to be a target of vandals seeking to undermine its symbolic significance. It's wild how much anger a mermaid story can bring out of people. Guys are getting pissed off now, but in 3D. It's like, come on, just enjoy it. It's a mermaid, grow up. Number nine, Sand Castle. Okay, this is a recent one, I had to include it. This one hurts my soul and it's kind of funny at the same time. I love sand castles, okay, who doesn't? I see one on a beach and I treat it like it's broken glass. I stay very, very far away. I don't even look at it the wrong way. Two teenage girls at the Royal Hawaiian Hotel in Waikiki, well, it seems they don't share the same love for sand castles. No, this is, uh, this one's pretty bad. That's right, August 12th, 2019, security footage caught one of the girls climbing over the barrier, not gracefully, might I add. She then proceeds to smash the sculpture with her bag but at first, if you don't succeed, try again, right? Maybe use your hands, maybe get your whole body in there. She climbs further in the closed off area and uses her hand to smack the head off of the sand sculpture, all in 4K, all right in front of the camera. Check it out. Number eight. The Vandalism of Guernica. One of the most significant acts of art vandalism occurred in 1974 when Tony Shavrazi spray painted the words, kill lies all across Pablo Picasso's iconic anti-war painting, which at the time was on display at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. Now, although the painting was successfully restored, this act of vandalism shocked the art community, right? They weren't snapping this time. Every artist was like, because the painting, you got it, here we go. A witness at the time, Gregory Lasapio, recalls being unable to move as the attack happened. Quote, we were all stunned. The guy turned around, cursed, and said, I am an artist. And then everybody started yelling and a guard came. Now this was long before cell phones, or else obviously I'd love to see this footage. This is insane. But you know everybody would have whipped their phones out immediately. This is crazy. Imagine seeing this in real time on a field trip. This kid was on a field trip too and he saw this guy do it. Crazy, what a day. Number seven, the attack on Michelangelo's David. This one hurts, this one hurts my toes thinking about it. In 1991, an Italian artist named Piero Canada attacked Michelangelo's marble masterpiece. He attacked him with a hammer, like a Gotham City villain, crazy. This all happened at the Galleria dell'Accademia in Florence. Now the attack damaged the statue's toes, prompting a meticulous restoration process to repair the invaluable piggies, the little artwork there. Antonio Pellucci, the director of the museum, told news outlets that luckily the material damage was repaired since they could find all the fragments. Some guys like, yes, I see the nail. We'll just glue that back on. No one will notice. But the emotional distress, well, that still remains. It's almost like he damaged the most famous statue in the world or something. That's weird. I don't know. Hit that thumbs up to uplift our art spirits. Number six, the damaging of Barton Newman's Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue 3. First of all, that's way too long of a title. That's going to be nuts in the time codes down below. I'm going to be typing for hours. This piece, Barton Newman's Who's Afraid of Red, Yellow, and Blue, number three, Back in 1986, a disturbed art lover named Gerard Jan Van Blanderen, sorry, it sounds like a wrestler's name, again, too long of a name, they vandalized Barnett Newman's abstract expressionist painting at the Stilgic Museum in Amsterdam. Now, Blanderen used a blade to slash the artwork, of course, everyone's doing the same thing here, irreversibly damaging the painting and leading to a complex restoration process. I'm still thinking about his name, that's why I'm giggling as I'm doing this right now. He went up and said, my name's way too long, and then he damaged the long name painting as well, just to get even. What a crazy act. 
Act. Jan Van Landren. Number five, The Slashing of the Starry Night, 1978. We all know this one quite well. In Toronto, you can actually walk around the Van Gogh exhibit, and it's not worth it. I, I would not recommend it. It's literally one room with a bunch of projectors. You're like, cool, all right, let's leave. But Vincent Van Gogh's masterpiece, The Real Starry Night, everyone's favorite, housed at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, fell victim to vandalism back in 1978. A woman named Asher Finkel, again, crazy name for all these attacks, just made up names, I guess. A woman named Asher Finkel attacked the painting with, you guessed it, a blade, causing significant damage forever. It was horrible. Skilled restorers were able to repair the artwork, but the scars, they still remain, so take a good look next time. These crazy named vandals attacking them. Number four, the vandalism of Banksy street art. How dare you? Numerous incidents of activists defacing or destroying street art attributed to the anonymous artist Banksy have occurred. Too many to name in this one list, but in 2008, an art dealer painted over one of Banksy's murals in London, claiming that it would increase the artwork's value. Hey, newsflash, it definitely didn't. Additionally, in 2014, an activist group called Clean Graffiti UK, they scrubbed away Banksy's works, arguing that the street art was a form of visual pollution. Nerds, that's what I say, nerds to that. These incidents have fueled debates about the nature of street art and ownership, but also letting things, you know, not be covered in graffiti. I get it at the same time. I don't know, I'm on the fence. My favorite Banksy piece was the painting that destroyed itself. Guy sets a timer like he's jigsaw. Crazy. Banksy's the closest thing we'll get to a real life superhero or villain, apparently, if you're clean UK. Scrub it off. Number three, the destruction of Ai Weiwei's Han Dynasty Yearn. I love this one, this one's brave. In 1994, Chinese contemporary artist Ai Weiwei intentionally destroyed a 2000 year old Han Dynasty urn. Yeah, it was an artistic statement. He was like, hey, check out this history. Poof. I don't know. He photographed the act, appropriately titling it, Dropping a Han Dynasty Urn, to critique the modification and destruction of historical artifacts. Honestly, message received. This is a pretty big deal. Weiwei's act stirred controversy and challenged the conventional notions of art and vandalism. And it was a panel divided into three images. These images get worse and worse when it comes to that urn's fate, you know? This frame, he's holding it. This frame, he lets it go. And the third frame shows a 2000 year old ceremonial urn, a historical urn with symbolic and cultural worth, smash completely to the ground. In one glance, you can see the entire event unfold and that upset a great deal of people. Many referred to his work as a desecration. That's fair. I, to me, I'm just like, hey, he's gonna clean that up. I'm, I'm definitely not gonna sweep that. My, I'm not wearing shoes, so I can't step over there. Sorry. Number two, Erase de Kooning. This is my personal favorite on this list. I've mentioned it before, but if you haven't heard it, you're gonna love this one. I'm so excited to talk about it. This drawing, or erasing, rather, this act of vandalism was done by the one and only Robert Rushenberg. See, Robert wanted to explore whether or not a piece of art could be created by removing markings rather than adding them. Yeah, try this one on your art teacher. Next project. Give him a blank piece of paper and be like, I don't know, I just tried something different. I'm creative. Huh. Felt good over there. It's been a while. Step one here was kind of hilarious. First, Robert had to ask his very successful friend, fellow Dutch artist, Willem de Kooning, for one of his brand new drawings. Well, he took it and then erased it. And he was like, hey, check it out. Look what I did. Better, I would say. Pretty much the entire thing gone. If you had five more minutes, it would be completely gone, but there's little frames and little markings left. You can barely see what was there before. After basically erasing all of the art, Robert added a frame and then he called it a day. In fact, he called it art. While others call the act pure vandalism, I think, uh, I don't know, I think it's quite brave. I don't think it's vandalism per se, but it's definitely not helping the situation. I don't know, I'm on the fence. I see what he was trying to do. It didn't work. I don't know what he expected. Finally, number one, Leonardo da Vinci's The Last Supper. This one's pretty bad. This was a big deal. We have to save it for number one, right? In 1950, an individual named Pierre Luigi Perugia vandalized Leonardo da Vinci's masterpiece, The Last Supper. He vandalized it in Milan, Italy. He did this like national treasure style. This was incredible. I don't know how we got away with this. Perugia, or Perugia, probably Perugia, sorry if I'm saying that wrong. Perugia, an Italian handyman, he entered the convent under the pretext of performing maintenance work, right? He had the belt and he was like, hey, I'm just gonna go and screw something in. And they let him go, whatever, he looked great, he had the vest on, all that good stuff. But he was armed with, you guessed it, a blade. He then attacked the painting, slashing at all the faces of the apostles, including that of Jesus Christ. How dare thee. The vandalism inflicted significant damage on the artwork, erasing original details and affecting the overall composition. Of course, because you just slashed it. This is like a national treasure, but instead of trying to preserve history, Nicolas Cage went in and was like, what now? I'm evil. Yeah, you didn't know. Those are the top 10 famous works of art that were publicly vandalized. Which famous attacks did we miss? I want to do a part two. This was quite fun for me. I like talking about art just being torn to bits, apparently. Am I the monster? Maybe I'm a monster. Whatever. We'll see you next time on Bumblebee. Bye.